Thank you so much, everyone. I have uh, joining me from London, uh, Kaude Ajula, a very senior lawyer. Thank you so much, Mr. Ajula, for joining us tonight on the program. Um, Thank you very much. It's my pleasure. Yeah, there's been a lot of um, debate and a lot of uh, dragging the judiciary into the arena uh, between what uh, has happened in the aftermath of the election. Let me get your take first and foremost on what has happened, the, the tension that has been created out of this election. Well, you should know one thing, that when it comes to election and the way our procedure is, after election, you'll find out that the judiciary will be the recourse where everybody will go. That's why we said the judiciary is the, is the last hope of common man. Now, judiciary seems to be the last hope of politician. And as it is, the, all the rat matters, all the noise, all the lies, uh, the soap boss as now seem to be shifted to the court. And it's expected that what is being done then seems to be on the judiciary. And that's why you see today, any politician, their, their misfortune, their gains seem to lie with the judiciary. So we should not be surprised the way they are being batched. And uh, some of us, we are worried, particularly as a lawyer, that this is not what it is. The judiciary will only determine what the case you brought before them. And they should not be subject of ridicule. They should not be subject where anybody today, you can see the way they are calling them out. You can see the way the way they are sharing their picture, their profile. And even some people were even saying they should call them, they should, they should call them on their phone, they should shame them. I would believe that one should not be. And that is why to some of us, we are happy with what some group are saying recently that they are going to ensure that any lawyers that should do this cyberbullying trying to disparage the justices would be met with discipline. And I think I, we need to thank them for that. And they are saying that others who are not lawyers, their names will be taken to the law of enforcement agency to be dealt with. I think our judiciary has to be respected, has to be protected. And all the lies of the fact that they, the corruption is going. My position is this. Whosoever you, you found wanting in the area of corruption, call him out. Let, the, let them be dealt with. But not that you put everybody under the same umbrella and to say that judiciary, they are corrupt. I don't think that's what it is. And the politician has to be one. All those who are sponsoring those people to harass, to intimidate, to uh, our judiciary, I think they have to stop. And like I said, all eyes are on them, they, then they'll be there with. Now, so, I mean, why do you think that this uh, bashing of the judiciary is happening in the first place. I, I, I imagine that the judiciary is supposed to be giving its uh, pride of place in our society and in our electoral and political system as one plays the arena where everybody runs for cover. Hey, well, this reason is not far-fetched. Like I said, this is the time for politics. As of now, the time for so balls for campaign is over. The election is over. Now, what remains now is that most of the politicians believe that they are, they are against or they are lost that they are side with the judiciary. The only thing they need to do is to center on them, overrode them, abuse them, harass them, intimidate them, blackmail them, both emotional blackmail, physical blackmail, lied against them. As it is today, the center, everybody is focused on them. And you know politicians with their ways. They tell lies, they say this, they do that, just to have their way. And they believe it is a campaign continue to do this to judiciary. And I believe it is our duty to ensure that this never happened. Like I do tell people, you go to court every day, there are a lot of cases our court has been doing. There are a lot of cases they've been dispensing with. You never hear any noise, but when it comes to political cases, that is when hell will be let loose. Even to the point that some people are even reporting them as if we don't know what we are doing. The independence of judiciary is telling them that oh, some day there is this rumor that they have not they have they will be banned from traveling out of the country. That some countries will stop them. And it is some people writing different petition, sending, calling the calling calling the the, the Department of State everywhere to say also so persons should not be allowed to come to your country. And we are saying why they have a duty to be to 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 the duty to perform, and they are performing their duty. If you feel that you are not happy with it, you allow things to be. Not that you, you, you bring down the whole house, you run down the entire judicial system of the country. And I think I will use this opportunity to call on the MBA because I believe it's their duty to protect both the bend and the bar. 
and I think it is their duty to ensure that the right thing is done. We have the law in place. We know how to deal with this, but it's like everybody seems to to sleep on their on, on their duties and their function, thinking that all is about politics. It should not be. After politics, we will still go back to court. We still have a judiciary to go to. And I don't think because of politics, we not we need to run it down. And I think the best way they always do is that to accuse them of corruption. But we just don't accuse people of corruption without any fact. Present the fact. NGC have been doing wonderfully well. You can see the way they discipline themselves. I think that is the way it should be. Not that you now use the same things to brush the entire judicial system to say they are corrupt. And it's so easy, easy for anybody to believe that. And I believe all this thing must stop. And whosoever that is form, form wanting must be dealt with. Either you're a lawyer or you, you, you are just a non-lawyer, they must be dealt with. There must be a way to respect constitutional authority. And that is what we're saying. Uh, Mr. Ajula, I thought that there is a self-cleansing me mechanism within ju the judiciary for those who have the fear that they might not be done right by the judiciary in the cases under petition that have been brought before the court. I thought that there are ways by which one can seek redress even when you don't think that the judiciary will do the right thing. Is there a way? Because those who are having, um, people who have the liberty and the freedom to, to think in the way they want to think in the sense that if they sense that they won't get justice, don't they have the right to, to have that perspective? No, you know one thing is that the mechanism is there. The National Judicial Council has been there. Each time we, we hear about the ways social judges have been dealt with, some are retired, some are suspended, some are asked to return money. The, the, the mechanism is there. The way to self-cleansing is there. What matters most is that any judicial officer that is found wanting and you believe has done something, yours is to bring a petition to put a proper place. You, you, you lay the petition, and we can see that several times over, this petition has been, has been attended to. Not that you go on the Facebook, you post a picture of a judge doing his daily job, you post of one, send it his name and profile, and say, oh, everybody should be calling him. That is, we never bring the independence of judiciary. And I think we need to keep it to the National Judicial Council. They've been doing wonderfully well. You, it, it is only in this country you learn that a judicial officer has been dealt with among all the three arms of government. The only arms of government that we know has been cleansing itself, has been revealing itself, is the judiciary. How many times did you hear a minister being asked to resign in Nigeria? How many times do you see a minister being suspended? How many times do you see even a, a legislator that's in those in National Assembly that's the, the legislative had that been that's that's been so disciplined? But judiciary, they've been doing that and they need to be commended. And I believe it is those that never be if you believe in the system, if you know you have the if you know you have the fact of any of the infraction of gross misconduct of any judicial officer, bring to the NJC. They've been doing wonderfully well, and I don't think... Mr. Ajula, no, I, I would in fact uh, imagine how critical some Nigerians are now about the role of the judiciary in some of the processes. In fact, uh, the, the, the number one uh, citizen, as far as the judiciary is concerned, uh, the chief justice of Nigeria, who is the chairman of the judiciary of Nigeria, uh, has, has come under intense scrutiny. And those who imagine there were some stories about maybe he traveled to meet a politician and uh, he was sitting on a uh, uh, on a wheelchair and those stories that came up and eventually we saw his video uh, leaving his uh, the, the office and going to the mosque i mean it's it's come to that point where the scrutiny is now so intense even to the very highest uh, personality in the judiciary well you know the the the, the, the chief judge of nigeria he is the highest judicial officer in this country, and it's like a symbol of that judiciary. And for you to see that for a man to have gone just for a medical treatment, medical trip abroad to be turned to something else, even to the point that senior senior legal, senior lawyers in this country happen to be one of those that send those pictures. But when he saw that what he's doing is wrong, he apologized the record that there. And this at the end, because I believe he did that because of being a senior and well known. Others kept going, and it has been shown that all those were not just fallacy. All those issues they were talking about that they went, and in the in the even in the story that being perpetrated, you never see where it is alleged that he physically or he met the politician they are making. It is just like a congestion; is a permutation. 
is, a, is, is the speculation. And you can see how the man is so harassed. So, so I, I know, God forbid, he's harassed, but you can see their plan is to harass him to, 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 to one way or the other tarnish its image. But I think he has been able to do that. But you can now see if they can go as far as going to look for the number one judicial officer in Nigeria, you can imagine the other, other justices. Several petition, fake spurious petition has been written against them, and we believe all this thing must stop. The right way to go about it is NJC as is there. NJC has been doing, doing what it is. NJC has dealt with the chief judge in this country. NJC has dealt with 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 both both, both the judges at the lower court, at the trial court, at the at the at the, at the lower court, and at the supreme court. NJC has been doing that, and I don't think if you believe in the system, you right. need to do that. But to go on wholesomely to deal with them, we believe enough is enough. And I need to let you know that lawyer Nigerian lawyers are ready to defend them because unfortunately this judicial officer by their station in life by their office cannot speak for themselves cannot defend themselves cannot come to the to, to, to the tv like the way i'm doing to say i did not do this it is and i believe we need to come together to to to, to, to arrest this situation uh stay with me mr Ajula. we'll take a breather uh, those who are asking that the proceedings in the presidential election petition uh, should be televised. Uh, I'd like to get your view on it. And perhaps this tension we are seeing in Nigeria, how do we douse it? Is the government, is the ruling party, is the opposition, are they doing the right thing as far as our nation is concerned and the interests of our people? Stay with me, everyone. Our conversation is next. We'll be right back. Thank you so much, everyone, for staying with us. Uh, Mr. Kaudi Ajula is a senior lawyer and he's been speaking with us uh, virtually from London. Thank you so much, Mr. Ajula, for your time tonight. Uh, let's get back to the tension that we're seeing in the land. I don't know if you heard what uh, former President Lucia Gombasan just said. For those who did not hear, let me allow you to listen to it, Mr. Ajula. I'd like to get your... Uh, reaction to what he said in respect of the tension in the land and of course how we need to go about it with the role that incoming government will have to play uh, their role in ensuring that Nigeria is united. Uh, take a listen to what former President Lucia Gombasan just said. Given what we saw during the elections, Nigeria is now even more divided and more corroded than we thought. This places a deep onus on any administration following the current one to urgently facilitate the process of national moral rearmament and national reconciliation that the potential to enhance healing for aggrieved and bereaved persons across Nigeria and to assuage the youth. This must be done in sync with the imperative of national value reorientation that Nigeria requires to build a collective sense of enduring and noble values and national belonging. Mr. Ajula, what do you think we need to do urgently? Coming from former President Lucha Gombasanjo, that our nation is very much divided. Well, there is a no gay saying in saying that Nigeria is not divided than where we are coming from. But why we have been having an issue in trying to make a comment of what General Lucha Gombasanjo has said is that in this, in this circumstance, particularly as it is, he seemed to be an interested party, and we all know the is, is, is the side of the divider he belongs to. So if one should now on that premises to, to discuss about him or whatever he's saying, I'm afraid I would not really like to do that. But generally, it is clear that after the election, some parts and some group believe that this is not the way it is. And I believe what Nigeria needs is national reorientation. We need the opinion order. Even now, to now, I still expect the president, commander-in-chief, that's President Muhammad Buhari, to address this issue as it is today, 
some part of the country believe they are annihilated, some part of the country believe that they are being persecuted, they are being harassed, and what all this, uh, though many people will say is a pocket of such issue happening, still it happens, and I believe there's a way to save the feeling of the people and to look for a way to reconcile the country. I believe Nigeria needs that now, and we need it urgently. Uh, we saw, I mean, I don't know if you have read the latest uh, uh, writing of uh, Professor Wale Shoyinka reacting to um, uh, dissent and uh, voice of dissent and uh, uh, the issues when people debate and how low people could go. And you heard, uh, I don't know if you have also heard what Chiman, uh, Chimamanda Adichie, the letter, open letter that he wrote to the United States President uh, Joe Biden and the reporter from Mr. Bayo Nonuga. Uh, do, the conversation becomes uh, a bit more unhealthy recently when uh, people are fierce and uh, people are now very, they are, they are towing, they, they, they are laying a hard, they are being hardline in, in, in their conversation and their criticism and perhaps not allowing um, uh, those who have uh, uh, different opinions to, uh, to speak their minds without being trolled and insulted unnecessarily. Uh, this kind of scenario that is playing out in our country about our politics, what's your view on it? Well, my view still remains the same, and I think you say you say it all. That as it is, by the time you look at what the Professor Wally Shinka is saying, what the Shiman Shimandam Dichie is saying, and what every other, most of them, they've taken side, and that's what makes that. That really is like a, a demonstration of how divided we are in this country. As of today, I'm yet to see any speaker, those who are engaging the public and, and interrogating the political issue that have been able to be objective. Everyone, and I must say with respect, I have very high respect for Professor Wale Shoyinka. I have very high respect for Shidamanda. I have respect for, for General Bishop Gomba I have all these people, you know, that they've taken side. They speak not from the position of objective. They speak from the position of, of, of their being subjective they are just trying to marshal their interests and that's why it's so unfortunate i think as of now what nigeria need is we need a voice of conscience voice voice of reason voice impartial voice that we say it as it is and that is why i'm saying this that we cannot deny the fact that nigeria is more divided and it is expected i remember in 2003 the time of general general juku and obasanjo and buari the same thing happened. If you remember 2011, it was even worse than this. This is when the followers, followers of General Buhari were killing, burning houses all over. We shouldn't be, should be grateful that this sign of the obedient or whatever name we call them, they kept agitating, but they have yet to take to street and burning houses of what happened in 2011. And 2000, and only in 2015, when President Jonathan accepted that yes i accepted defeat worry one that's why we we have never we didn't see what we are seeing now. at the end of every election and that was sometimes we always ask that the loser should congratulate the winner once that has happened you will see that the whole thing at this as that house but unfortunately but can, a, can a loser congratulate a winner when they have gone to court to challenge the outcome of the election well, but 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 the consequence of that is what we are seeing when election is is squarely lost as it is today because I still ask myself how the the, the, the articles of this world and OB we say they win an election where are they supposed to be united? One thing we should know is this: many people do tell me that the person in, the person announced return as president elect is unpopular, and I agree it's unpopular because as it is, he only scored 35, 37 percent. Of the of the of the entire, so I mean that sixty three percent. Are they being that those that oppose him come together the way we saw it in two thousand and fourteen fifteen when General Buhari, Ashwa Jibola, met Tinubu, Kwankwaso, our article, and all those people come together. We won't have we won't have had this kind of problem. But I think the follower need to know the the dynamics of this election. Need to know the the vote is distributed. I think that they come together, but they, they won't have this problem. Unfortunately, it is after election, it now done on them that they want to come together and start addressing public. It is so obvious who won this election. 
by the constitutional provision is so obvious. But whether they, they whatever they say, they, they call it, the winner has emerged. It's expected that they need to heal the wound. The governments that, that conduct its election, that's President Muhammad Buhari, need to come out fully with a statement to assure the feeling of the people. And I believe the losers need to be told that 2027 is, is close by. They need to put their resources together to go all out and to ensure that they are united and win an election. But if they need to, they want to go on in making all these things, I don't think it will not go well for the country. Let's uh, wrap up the conversation on this note. Those who are asking for a televised uh, proceeding of the presidential election petition, um, do you think that will happen? And if, if it's been granted by the court, to what effect would that uh, be on the, on the process? Well, I want to believe that it can happen. And I say this with the fact that, yes, as a lawyer, I know that the court proceeding is not televised for, for several reasons. But we have been told that the election petition is so generous, the class on its own. And we need to know the interest election petition is generating, has been generating. So I think Nigeria needs to be sure of what it is. And mind you, the last presidential election at the Court of Appeal was the, that the the only part that was televised was during when the when the judgment is given the judgment was so long that many people slept off even some lawyers slept off but i believe and one of the reason why we i believe that this 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 proceeding need to be televised is to assuage the people many people has been coming with driven they are different version but if the whole world can see what happened then to me let me give you an example the matter in Imo State that brought in Opu Zodima. Till today, I've seen many people, when you ask them what happened, the only thing they'll be able to tell you is that somebody that placed fault was made to be the, pre the governor. But forgetting that Supreme Court, when determining the matter, many issues is put, is many people is, 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 is determined. For example, the issue of the commissioner of police of the states a statement, uncontroverted statement, it is one of those things that made the Supreme Court to return hope with those use of demand. Nobody, I've seen many people discussing on national TV talking about they never raised the issue war, and nobody till today ever blamed the commissioner of police. Because when an issue comes from authority of so and it's not controverted, it is the duty of the court to accept it. And for the court to accept that and for making the hope with Zodima, the governor of Imo State, nobody discussed that. So what I'm expecting is this. By the time we all were glued to our TV, we can see what was discussed, what was not discussed, and we can be so sure what's being said. And I think that one will assure the people's mind. Nigeria are interested in this election. They're interested in who governed them. And I must be sincere. In the courtroom, it is part of that process. And Nigeria need to be like, I preach accountability, I preach transparency for this issue to be put at rest for Nigerians to know who, who is their president. I think they need to hear it, take a live, live proceeding, let the whole world know. So nobody will tell you any spin story or nobody will deceive you or lie to you that this is what happened in court. I think the leadership of the of, of, of the judiciary should think of this and if possible, they should right. allow it at least to assume people's mind. Claudia Ajula, a very senior lawyer, thank you so much indeed for your thought tonight, I appreciate it. And allow, let me allow you to go enjoy the rest of your Easter celebration. Thank you so much indeed for your time tonight.